Hey guys, Sam here at NA Studios. Thanks in advance for watching. Today I want to show you how you can completely speed up your workflow when you're dealing with vocals in RX. Now this is with any door really, any door that you can fly something out from and go into RX and then come back to your door. If you're interested to see how you can do that in Logic or indeed Pro Tools, uh, you can check out the links in the description where I go through how you can do that. But for now, I'm going to assume you've got that set up and let's check it out. So here I've got some vocals that have been sent over to me to mix. It often tends to be a lot of fun, but it can be a bit of a mixed bag with the home vocal recordings, all that kind of stuff. What I tend to do is bring everything into Logic and then fly it out into RX. And the easiest way to do that, once you've got it all set up, is just selecting a vocal section and pressing Shift and W, and then it brings it up into RX. And a super quick way that you can do stuff here is to create your own module chain. You know that you're going to use the same settings each time. You can just bring up that chain, click render, and it will do everything that you normally do without having to open up all those separate modules. So you can bring that chain up by going into Window and Module Chain or just pressing C. It brings it up over here. Now this is what I routinely do. I'll do two passes of a mouth de-click and then a de-plosive as well. The mouth de-click are both the same. They're sensitivity at 4.6. Uh, the second one, so you can see, is exactly the same. And then I like to do a, a one pass of de-plosive. I may need to go in and do individual bits, but generally that tends to work quite well uh, because I'm not being too harsh with it. Strength at five, sensitivity at three. Hey, sorry to interrupt. I realized while I was editing this, I never actually showed you how to create the chain because I'm an idiot. So what you do is when you've got that module chain open by pressing C in window, just press the plus symbol and then you can add any module that you want into that chain. Keep pressing plus and keep adding modules into that chain. When you've created a chain that you like, then you can go up to the three lines at the top. You can go add preset and you can save that as a preset so you can bring it up every single time. Sorry about that. Back to it. So let's go for it. Let's render these vocals. If you look down at these sections here, this is an obvious plosive and you'll see, I'm just going to click render and you'll watch them disappear. Awesome. So you can see that they've disappeared. If I go back to the original state, you can see they come back up again and then back to the module chained version. They're completely gone. I'm going to press command option and S and that's going to send it back to Logic so that when I open it up again, it will just refresh the audio file and we can carry on working. Now this kind of work is extremely important when you're dealing with lots and lots of vocal channels. You can also make this even easier by setting up a batch process and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So if I go to window again and go to batch processor, we can work on a number of files at once. Now in here we have our module chain again. So if we go into that original module chain and I'm just going to save this one as Sam vocals. So I'm going to add this as a preset, Sam vocals, hit enter and that's saved. So then when I go into my module chain here, I can just go to Sam Vocals and it's going to bring it up. So what I need to do is just drag all my files into this batch processor and it will do everything at once. So for me, I know that I've got it all over in Finder. I've just got Vox 1 to 13 here. I can just pop those into batch processor. It's going to do this module chain for me. So once I've got these all in batch process, we can choose to go to a different location if we want to, or we can just overwrite the original files. I just want to save these to the original location, and there's a way that you can get around the kind of file naming system so this does in fact replace the original files. And I'm going to show you that now. So what this has done is it has created a load of duplicates. It's created joshvox01 underscore one. Well, this is not what we want. So fortunately, we've still got all of the original vocals selected. So I'm going to go command and backspace delete those ones, then select all these, control and click, and then go to rename. And I can batch rename these files. So I want to call them the same thing as the original ones were called, so that Logic or any door will just update the file and it will recognize that it is in fact the same file, even though it's not, so you're kind of tricking it. Here I want to change underscore one dot wav to just dot wav. So every time it sees an underscore one dot wav, it says, okay, let's get rid of that underscore one and just call it dot wav. Let's go rename. And it's renaming all of them for me. So when I go back into logic, it will just refresh all those images. And I know that that has refreshed all my files. So I know that I've now got all my RX versions within logic that I can continue to mix with. So two really quick ways of working with multiple audio files there. Module Chain is really useful because you can just slam a load of modules on that you use all the time, kind of like a preset, and then just go, right, okay, just process those. 
Batch Processor takes it one step further, allows you to use that module chain within the Batch Processor and do numerous modules on numerous audio files at the same time, which is really, really handy. I hope this has been useful for you. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care.